today we're going to finish off the conform that we started in the previous tutorial. So where we left off, uh, we had a full timeline of clips. As you can see, the input color space of these clips need to be adjusted. So what we're going to do is we're going to let's do all of these clips together and we're going to enter the group grading mode. Now we're going to hit command G to do that. And you can see that all of our selected clips and our flashing and if we make any change to any one of these clips it will apply that change to them all so and we're going to go up here to our input color space and this video was shot on a sony camera so we're going to go ahead and change it to s log 3. really important we're going to exit out of group grading mode with command g that's a very dangerous mode to accidentally be in now if we tab up with our cursor to our offline you can see that we have a 239 mask applied here on the offline so we want to apply that in our timeline as well to do that we're going to go to our cursor view and we're going to make sure that mask and guide are added if they're not come up to the add remove options button and add the mask add the guide and also while we're here make sure you add the counters with this available we're going to go ahead to the mask and apply a 239 mask and as you can see if we toggle up between the offline and the online we have uh, got the same mask Fantastic. So now the most important step, we're going to sync check the media that we have on the timeline against our offline reference. I mentioned in the first video of the series that cursors are very powerful and we're going to see that a little bit today. So the first step that we're going to do is we're actually going to create a second cursor. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to hit command two. I can create as many as I want, command three, four, five, six, and you can remove them um, by doing the same command. So command six, five, four, three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my cursor two, and I'm gonna do that by just hitting the two button, and I'm gonna move my cursor up just so it's looking at the offline. If I wanna select my cursor one, I can hit the one key, and you can see that it jumps me down to the bottom uh, where I'm viewing my online clip. So if I jump back up to my cursor two by hitting the two button on the keyboard, you can see that my cursor two has a two through nine mask. Now, because it's looking at the offline, it doesn't actually need that mask. So if I go ahead and take off that mask, we've just removed that for that cursor. If we jump down to cursor one, we can see that our mask is still applied. So we have different cursor settings for our different cursors. Now, a really important thing to know at this stage is the gang cursors button should be enabled. If it's not enabled like that and we hit play, uh, these cursors are gonna drift out of sync. Um, we don't want that. So we're gonna hit gang. And what we can do now is we can compare these two cursors to each other. So the first way that I'm gonna show you is if you hit function F2, um, function F2 brings up your two cursors uh, side by side. Cursor two, the offline here, and cursor one, the online. The way that we're gonna sync check today is we're gonna hit function command F2 that brings a wipe UI to the image here. Um, if we ever want to get out of this wipe, uh, we can just hit function F1, which brings us back to the full screen. So to recap, we have function F1, we've got function F2, which brings up the two cursor view, function command F2, which brings us to our wipe. With this wipe applied and with the gang cursor enabled, we're going to tab back, we're going to go back to the beginning, and now we're just going to watch down our film and see if we can spot any differences between the online and the offline. Okay, so uh, we've come across our first issue. I'm going to hit Z to jump back to the first frame. I'm going to hit function F1 and then function F2 to show our split screen. So as you can see, um, it looks like there's been a flop applied in the offline. Um, so to reapply that here in the online, just below your input format tab in the geometry sub panel, you've got the orientation field and that contains all of your flips and flops. So I'm going to go ahead and add a flop to my image. And as you can see, that looks like that's fixed it. So I'm going to go ahead and make my view a little bit bigger. And uh, with function command F2, jump back to my wipe. Go back a few frames with the left arrow key and hit spacebar to play forward.
Okay, so I'm just gonna shift my wipe to go on her face. It is very overexposed. I might select my clip and hit P, which is the shortcut for adding a grade layer. Shift P deletes it. I'm gonna hit P and I'm gonna just quickly, in my uh, base grade and my balance parameter, I'm just gonna click the balance tool and make an anti-clockwise motion here this you can see that's just bringing my exposure down a little bit okay so that looks like it's in sync <laughs> this does not look like it's in sync so again i'm going to go ahead and um, with function f2 jump to my split screen view this is where it's really important to know about your counters so um, we added counters to our cursor view uh, just before so i'm going to go ahead and click the show counters and you can see what that's done is if we go to our counters drop down you can see that it's added our shot time code and our record time code. Um, we can compare what source time code we have in the timeline in comparison to what it should be in the offline. So what we can do is we can go to our parameters view and we have this um, frame offset button. Um, so what we do, if we change this by, if we change that to 40, you can see that this has jumped back 10 frames. Go ahead and take another 10 frames off there and you can see that we're getting real close um, we are just five frames ahead of the offline. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 25, which takes off another five frames. And you can see that now our source time code is perfectly spot on with what the first frame of the offline is. We're going to go function command F2, make sure our wipe's hitting the spider, and go a couple of frames back with the left arrow key and hit spacebar. Okay, so this looks like it is in sync. Again, we've still got our counter view showing, so K is the shortcut for that one. And we're gonna go ahead and continue watching it down. Okay, so what's going on here? It looks like there's a cut error. So I'm gonna go function F2 to get my split screen view up. So this is our offline here, and we're looking for the cut point in the offline okay so this is where the offline cuts I'm gonna zoom it into my timeline here um, okay so I need to cut this clip to match the cut in the offline so to do that I'm gonna hit command K okay and then I'm gonna click it and delete it I'm gonna jump ahead to this clip here and I'm gonna make sure that my counter view is enabled so I hit K yeah and as you can see this time code that we have the source time code isn't matching um, if this did match, what I'd probably do is just uh, extend this clip back out um, and then everything would be in sync. But it doesn't look like that this is in sync at this point. So quickly jump ahead to the next cut, check if it's a big issue or whether it's just contained within this shot. I'm going to toggle back a frame with the left arrow key. Okay, so th this cut point looks fine and I'm going to jump ahead to the next. Okay, so the cut points down the timeline look okay. Uh, we're just working with a um, issue within this clip. So hit Command C, and I'm gonna delete this clip. Jump back to the cut with Z, and I'm gonna hit Command F. So Command F is force paste. What I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and extend this clip by this amount. So again, I'm gonna go into my edit view, edit type overlap. I'm gonna move my cursor with X, to the point of this cut. I'm gonna go ahead and select this clip, making sure my end slider is selected. I'm gonna go ahead and change this end time code to reflect this new cut. So I'm gonna change this to 2902 and hit enter. And you can see that that has jumped to that point there. Cool, I'm gonna exit edit mode like so. And I'm gonna jump back to the beginning of this clip. Now we can see that our source time code is incorrect at this beginning point here. So again, I'm gonna edit my offset, and change it to 20. Um, okay, so we're not quite there, 25, 27. So you can see I've just nudged my um, offset to match the first frame of this offline. And uh, now we're gonna watch down and see if it matches. So uh, function command F2, and we're gonna hit play. Okay, so you can already see that it's drifting out of sync. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a split screen view. And okay, so we can see that our time code, even though at the beginning our source time code is matching, as soon as we start playing this down, 
our time code starts to drift. So this implies that there's a respeed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take stab in the dark and just see if it's a half respeed. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the increment to 0 0.5. So that's playing it at half the speed. Cool, so now I'm gonna go back to the start, hit function command F2 and see if this um, half speed increment has fixed our problem. And it doesn't look like it has. I'm gonna go ahead and just go function F1 and then jump between my two cursors with two, one. Okay, definitely hasn't worked. So I'm gonna go back to the start of my clip and hit Command Z. At this point in time in the conform, I would um, clarify with the editorial what they've done to this clip. I can guess, I can experiment, but to be honest, the fastest way uh, to fix this problem is to communicate it to editorial and make sure that you are doing exactly what they've done. Um, you may need to, if it's a dynamic respeed or something weird, you might need to send this off to an external software to get this respeed done. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is now that we've got our first frame matching, it's a good start. I'm going to right click this clip and I'm going to go set strip categories and just set the default editorial mark here. So this just lets us know visually on the timeline that there's follow-up required on this clip. For now, we're just gonna move on and we're gonna clarify that with editorial later down the line. Cool, so jumping to the next cut with X, I'm gonna go ahead and hit function command F2 and continue watching down. Okay, so if you have a look at these pillars over here, you can see that uh, we have, we have a, um, a difference going on. If we go function F1, and just jump between the cursors. Uh, we can pretty clearly see that there's a zoom in going on to this clip. If we go all the way to the end. Yeah, okay, cool. Definite, definite zoom in. It looks to be in sync at this point, but there's a dynamic zoom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and in our uh, parameters view, in this empty panel here, if you don't see it empty, you can right click one of these and you can insert a new row or append a new row. But I'm gonna go ahead and click this and go change operator type to a transform. And I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And my parameters view changes. Um, so here is the image transform settings. And I'm gonna ignore all of this tracking and stabilization stuff for now. So if I flick between my offline and my online, I can see that at this point, all of this is correct. So I'm gonna to wanna to create my first keyframe using these settings. If I shift click this button, you can see that I can adjust all of the uh, keyframe modes in tangent. So I'm gonna go ahead and click all linear and you can see that changes the keyframe mode for all of these parameters here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the keyframe button, which is set a keyframe for all of these fields. And you can see that in the keyframe uh, section of this uh, menu. So now I'm gonna to jump towards the end of my clip. I'm just gonna go X and then one frame back. Um, also home and end, jump you to the start and the end of the clip. Um, and I'm going to jump between my online and my offline. Okay, so you can see that there's a uh, significant jump in. Just gonna make a stab in the dark and assume that it's a 1.1 scale. And I'm gonna check, jump between my offline and my online. And there you go. So if we watch this down now, um, you can see that we've got two keyframes here and our scale field is zooming up in a linear fashion throughout this clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and go function, command F2. And I'm gonna play this down. Okay, so this looks like it's matching fine. That's great. We're gonna continue playing on. Okay, so you can start to see over here, there is, looks like to be another zoom in. To check this, we're gonna go function F1 and jump between our two cursors, two and one. Yeah, so it's looking like exactly what we had in our previous clip. A digital zoom in. Okay, perfect. So I'm actually not gonna do this one. Um, I'll leave this one for you guys to do. Again, the starting points would be to add an image transform here, select it, shift click this keyframe mode to change it to your preferred uh, keyframe mode. I personally like all linear. And then uh, to create your first keyframe on the first point of your clip. Now, um, an important note, you see how we've marked this one as a editorial follow-up. Um, any transform that I make in the timeline, so that's an image zoom, an increment, so like a re-speed change, um, a flip or a flop, 
I'd also want to mark that up in the timeline for visual clarity. So I'm going to go ahead and select these two clips that have transforms on them. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Command G, so Group Grade. You can see they're both flashing now. I'm going to right click and set a category for the two strips. I haven't made any custom categories. So for now, I'm just going to use the default strip category. I'm going to go ahead and click off and hit Command G. And you can see that now we've marked our opticals with a little flag uh, to let the colorist and ourselves know that we have done an image transform or we've manipulated the image in some way in baseline. So that's good. We've also made one more change on the back end here. It was this shot and we added a flop. So again, I would count that as an optical and I'd wanna mark that so that we know that that image has been changed in baseline. So anyway, guys, that comes to the conclusion of the Conform Assist series. We've successfully um, done it, really. We've uh, we brought media in, uh, we've matched it to an offline. Um, that's our Conform. So congrats if you've been following along and have downloaded the media. Um, again, the link's below if you want to uh, work with these assets and have a go doing it yourself. Um, and yeah, good luck with all of your future conforming. See you in the next video.